Hello, hi, hey, hey y'all, girl with the crooked bun, look at you. I'm gonna have to cut this heater off because I feel like it's gonna make so much noise. You know what, Target bag, don't be moving during my video because what you're not gonna do is that. So I, <laughs> it's something wrong with me. So I am in my office for the first time in, I don't know how long like damn near a year what maybe like six months i haven't worked in the office in so long like it's it's been a minute it's been a minute since i've been in here it's sad because i definitely pay rent here um but i usually rent it out or not maybe depends on who it is <laughs> but it is the ttm office slash my office and I am here at 10 o'clock at night. So I was working on some accounting stuff and I was like, might as well do the accounting tips while you here. Duh, that makes sense. Wait a minute, this money, baby. Girl, get your life together. So a few accounting tips, cause I told y'all I was gonna come back with them. Well, more like tax tips, I should say. I told y'all I was gonna make a video about the tax tips. If you have not seen the last one that I did where I explained the new rule about the $600 that's gonna go into effect this year, then you need to watch that. Hmm? If you haven't seen it, that means you ain't subscribed. That means you ain't subscribed. Okay, I was waiting for you to subscribe. Um, but yeah, and it's Black History Month, power to the people. Y'all know I'm black, so <laughs> this ain't that new. And yes, I wrapped all of that because that wig had to go. But um, a few accounting or tax tips. I keep saying accounting tips because I'm an accountant. But a few tax tips. Okay, so I am an accountant and tax preparer. Okay, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. There's a difference between an accountant and a tax preparer. Now, you do have tax preparers that are accountants. Okay, you do have accountants that are tax preparers. So you have both, but majority of the time, if a tax preparer is a tax preparer, that's all they do. They come out during tax season and they fight for, let me do your taxes, let me do your taxes, let me do your taxes, let me do your taxes. And then after tax season, they be gone until the next year. So don't get it mixed up. Um, I don't like that. <laughs> Don't call me a tax preparer. I'm definitely an accountant. I got two degrees and some debt to prove it. Um, so, I don't do personal taxes. Now, this confuses people, and I'm explain why. I used to do personal taxes back in the day. Don't do it no more because I what I'm not going to do is fight you about how much money you're going to get back and, and the refunds and the dependents and the, and the credits. and the, it, no, I'm not going to do all that. It's, it's not worth it. I'm not going to do all that. Um, people were frustrating me, <laughs> so I was like, mm -mm, personal taxes ain't for me, it ain't for me. So I don't do those anymore, but I do do business taxes. Now, if you are a sole proprietor, if you have an LLC, LLC is treated just like a sole proprietorship, then your personal and your business are on the same tax return. Okay, because this confuses people because I tell them I do business taxes and don't do personal taxes. I do business taxes and I have to do your personal taxes in order to do your business taxes. So it's on the same tax return. It just, you have your Schedule C, which reports your business income along with your self-employment taxes and multiple other forms. But you also have to include your W-2 income if you are an entrepreneur and you work at a job as well. So if you're a sole proprietor or LLC, personal and business go on the same tax return. Okay, both of them are recorded on your 1040. So I do do personal if you have a business. I don't do personal if you do not have a business. That is the difference. Now, if you are a LLP or a partnership, then I do do those as well. And I do S Corp and C Corp. I do all business tax returns. But if you are a partnership, it's on your personal tax return, but you get what's called a K-1. So the business has to do its own tax return on a 1065. So you do have to file a actual business return 
form 1065 and each partner gets a K1, which is pretty much a percentage or a split of the profit. So let's say for instance, um, I'm in a partnership company with Christian. Uh, Y'all yeah, know I'm gonna use her as an example. Me and Christian got a partnership company and we split it 50 50. So I would file a 1065 business return for the actual business and then I will receive a K1. Let's say we profit $400. I will receive the K1 with 200 on it or my 50%, and she will receive a K1 with her 50%. And both of us have to report that on our uh, tax return. Also, again, this is a personal tax return and you're reporting your partnership business income. Okay? I hope that made sense. But 1065 business return for a partnership. Each partner gets a K-1. That K-1 is then reported on their tax return. It, is, it works the same way. You got to have your Schedule C with your deductions, your credits, all of that. If you don't know what a Schedule C is, um, it is a breakdown of your income and your expenses. So I would suggest you Google it and you'll see the breakdown of your expenses. That's why I always tell people, get a bookkeeper because you literally take your income statement at the end of the year and put it on your Schedule C. Because if you pull up a Schedule C on Google, you will see meals and entertainment, rent, supplies, travel, it'll be listed out. And so you wanna have those accurate numbers on your tax return. And in order to keep from guesstimating, estimating, pulling out receipts, if you have a bookkeeper, you can literally take that one sheet of paper and transfer it to your Schedule C. It's that easy. Get you a bookkeeper, preferably me. Uh, <laughs> shameless plug. So that is the difference, or so to speak, how it kind of works. Because I, I, people get confused when I say I don't file personal tax returns, but I do business, but then they end up being. And then I tell them it's on the same one, so they get confused. Um, with S Corps and C Corps, that's a different, that's like a whole video in itself because they are filed differently separate from the individual. So those are filed completely by themselves, separate from the individual. So we'll get into those in a later video. Because for the most part, people, unless you're like a huge business, and by huge, I mean huge, huge, most people do LLCs. And they do LLCs because it's a limit. It's a limited liability corporation, which means if some happen or you get sued, some tragic happen, then your personal assets are protected. So that's why most people do a LLC versus a sole proprietorship. Then it's the same thing, except your assets or your personal assets are not protected. So I always tell people get an LLC, or if you're gonna get your, you know, business. Uh, license or business type pick LLC or LLP if you're a partnership which is limited liability partnership so because it'll ask you sole proprietorship LLC S Corp C Corp and like two other ones I think like trust and other which is usually like nonprofit so that's that rule and another one 1099 NECs which used to be 1099 miscellaneous this rule passed last year, or they changed it last year. So 1099 miscellaneous independent contractors, contract workers, used to get a 1099 miscellaneous for, you know, whatever, like me. Basically, I'm an accountant, so I get a 1099 from my clients if I make over $600. The rule is if you make over $600, which, if, again, go back and watch the last video because I explained all this in that video. And I may have mentioned the NEC, but I'm not sure. I think I said I was going to dive deeper into it in the next video, which is this one. So you used to get a 1099 miscellaneous where I want to say it might have been box number 9 or 11. I'm not quite sure. My brain is not braining. Dang. My office is right by 16. So if y'all hear loud noise in the background, I just can't be great nowhere. Anyway, the 1099 miscellaneous, they have moved it to an NEC, which is non-employment compensation. That used to be on the 1099 miscellaneous, but now they have created an, its own form, which is a 1099 NEC. So if you have a contractor, if you have an independent contractor, even if you have like, say for instance, my job, it's a corporation, big business, 
they have people who are W two and they have people who are ten ninety nine that they pay through accounts payable versus through payroll. So, or they have people that they just ten ninety nine and they pay through accounts payable instead of payroll. So now they're getting a ten ninety nine NEC, which is basically again somebody that you are not paying through payroll. They don't get a W two; they get a ten ninety nine NEC. So that is the difference. Um, they again, they have changed the form. It's not a ten ninety nine miscellaneous no more. If they have non employment compensation, which is usually your independent contractors, that is the most popular, uh, the most used. So now you 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 make sure you use the ten ninety nine NEC. So this year and last year, I had to use the ten ninety nine NEC and not the 1099 miscellaneous, but prior to that, it was a 1099 miscellaneous. Um, you can get free forms from the IRS website. Just make sure you order them like two months ahead because I waited until the last minute and ordered them and they're not here yet. So I had to go to Office Depot and buy the forms from there. So know that you can get like any tax form, W-2s, W-2C, like all of that, you can get them for free from the IRS website. So that'll keep you from going into Office Depot or whatever store and paying $30, $40 for a pack of 10, which is what happened to me. Go to the IRS website like two months in advance and get them for free. Okay, pause. One thing I also forgot to mention, 1099s are due to your independent contractors by January 31st, just like W-2s. So please make sure you order them ahead of time or issue them out, buy them ahead of time, because they have to be to your employees by January 31st. Um, so that is that has now changed as well. So make sure if you have 1099 workers or if you have independent contractors, you are giving them a 1099 NEC instead of a 1099 miscellaneous. Even if you look at a 1099 miscellaneous right now, you won't see non-employment compensation anymore. So the box isn't even there anymore. It's like rents, royalties, uh, other and like nine other boxes that I can't remember right now. So that's that on that. The four hundred dollar rule is tip number three. The four hundred dollar rule. So what do I always tell y'all? File your business income on your taxes. Okay, they done made it now to where you ain't got no choice with the six hundred dollars. But file your income on your taxes, even if at the end of the day it is a loss. Um, if you have a loss, you don't necessarily have to file because you're at a loss. So you didn't, you can bring in the income and have your expenses. You can still file, but it's not mandatory that you file. Yeah. The $400 rule is if you make 400 or less, then you don't have to pay taxes on it. So you only start to pay income taxes when you go over $400. When you go, when your profit go over $400, then they start taxing the money. But if it's under $400, you don't pay taxes. So if I file my taxes, which I think I did this last year. Yeah, I think my profit was like $139 by the time I was done. <laughs> Baby, I'll be writing off. Do you hear me? You know how much money I spent? <laughs> I'll be writing off all that. I bought three laptops last year. I'm writing all that off. It's a new ring light behind me. I'm writing that off. Okay, so that's why you got to get you an accountant because they know 100% accurately what to write off. What are your deductions? What is this? What, what qualifies? Things like that. So, um, and tax repairs do too. I'm not going to throw no shade. Um, I know a lot of tax repairs. I'm not, I'm not going to throw no shade at y'all. I fucked with y'all the, the long way. But, again, difference. So, you don't have to pay taxes if it's 400 or less. Once you make over 400, that's when they give me all that. Because mine was 139 last year and I did not owe. I almost end up owing, but between my W 2 and my again. Okay, pause again. Um, You don't pay self employment tax. Okay, so when you file as a business, you have to pay self employment taxes. If it's $400 or less, you do not pay self-employment taxes. I didn't make that clear. I'm just saying taxes. But essentially, it's kind of the same thing, but it's not. Just think no tax. $400, you're good. In $139, they didn't tax that. 
I I think my refund was like eighteen dollars. <laughs> like $18. Then I took out of my 401k. That's 10% penalty and you got to pay taxes on that. Again, a whole nother video. But I think I ended up getting back like $18. <laughs> because I was working part time, didn't pay enough in taxes. I don't even want to know my tax bill for this shit. Like, I don't even want it. I'm going to owe. I have so many more clients now. I made triple the money this year as a 1099 independent contractor than I did last year. So I'm going to file that extension. I'm going to file that extension. And I'm going to file my taxes in October. Okay? I need as much time as possible. But, um, and you can do that as well. You can't file an extension and uh, file your taxes in October. But if you're going to do it, do it now. April 15th is when taxes are due. But if you need an extension, you can file an extension until October. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. Um, what else? What else? Um, I'm trying to think of like simple rules. If y'all have any, again, if y'all have any specific questions, then make sure you ask them in the comments or make sure you yeah, ask them in the comments because I'm more likely to see them. If you, as y'all can see, I respond to all my comments. Like I'm always going to respond. Um, so if y'all have any specific questions, let me know, drop them in the comments, and I will address those in another video. But those are kind of some of the main important rules or common questions that I get um, because people are like, oh, my God, I made, I made $150. I got to file on my taxes. Am I going to have to pay taxes, blah, blah, blah. So, no, there's the $400 rule that exists. And then you have the 1099 NEC that changed. And then you have the breakdown of your business being on your personal tax return depending on your business type okay a lot of people probably gonna have questions about deductions and stuff yeah i feel that coming i feel it coming shout out to natalie uh, <laughs> <I'm sleepy. laughs> y'all know i ain't got no sense um but yes make sure you come to evans financial solutions if you need help if you need a bookkeeper if you need a tax repair again seriously god damn what y'all doing <sighs> if you need a tax repair i do just do taxes even if you are not a client or even if you don't need accounting i do also just prepare taxes but again they have to be business taxes i'm not doing personal and the only downside to doing business taxes and you don't have proper accounting, it is going to cost more because now I actually have to go through and do like a rush accounting so that I can properly do your deductions and your expenses, write-offs, all that. So, again, please get a bookkeeper. I don't know how many times I got to tell y'all that. Get a bookkeeper. If you're too small and you feel like you can't afford it, at least keep track of your books use an excel spreadsheet use a paper a tablet some just make it organized to the point where if i ask don't don't give me no receipts i don't want no receipts bro <laughs> don't give me no receipts keep track and also another tip please 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 have a separate bank account for your business do not mix your business money with your personal money that drives me crazy that's the first question I ask when I do my consultations. Do you have a separate business account? Please get a separate business account. I don't care if you keep $100 in it. Get a separate business account. You don't want to mix business and personal. If you need to pay yourself, pay yourself from the business account. I also tell my clients or future clients, if you need to pay for something with your personal money, then what you do is send your money to the business account and pay it from the business account. Don't, I know it's easy, it's, it's second nature where we just swipe the business card for personal stuff or vice versa. We just buy something for our business on our personal card. It's, we can't help it, especially if it's spur in a moment. But please, please, please keep them separate. Keep, keep them separate because that's a, you, you crossing a line. Cause when the IRS come knocking, they not that we not gonna they not gonna pull a personal and all. They ain't gonna do all that. They want to see that business account. We want to see what's running through your business. Make your life easier and get a separate business account. Pay yourself from the business if you gotta pay yourself a certain percentage. 
total up your bills. So if you got bills that are $800 a month, then schedule a payment for $800 a month from your business account. Okay? Please do that. Um, so that is the tips that I have for this video. And again, if y'all have any questions, please let me know. I am going home. <laughs> I am going home. I was tired, boss. And y'all done seen my last video with the update with the new job. Okay? Here's a perfect example of why I have to work and do stuff at night. Okay? I make time for y'all. I told you I would. I love y'all. Always. That much. That part. Um, and I'm going to get into some more videos because we got to talk about Black History Month. Duh. <laughs> I recorded some videos today that I need to... Brooklyn uh, on my case, though. Like, I feel attacked because I legit do have videos in my phone. And she low-key like, sis, I'm going to need you to go upload them and quit being lazy. Like, <laughs> I am Brooklyn. I got to go through them. Because some of them I probably wouldn't even talk about shit. Um, and I don't want y'all to sit there and listen to me not talk about shit to talk to myself. So... I will go through them, I promise. I recorded some today. I did some car motivations. I'm going to do another one tomorrow because I got some things to say. And it's Black History Month, so that's happening. This, let's see, today is February the 6th. I don't know. It's Saturday. I'm, I'm going to upload this tomorrow. Y'all going to see it tomorrow on Sunday. I'm not going to explain myself. Anyway, love y'all. And until the next video, bye.